Four minutes late, Mikhail, we're keeping a dossier. Sorry? <laughs> Four minutes late, we're keeping a dossier. My fault. My fault. I will get something for you guys next time. I pay the fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's been really good. Um, the boys have been training fantastically well. Obviously, the weather conditions helped a lot. Um, and we had a busy week with some players as well leaving the club. Um, a lot of work to do, and, uh, and we wish them all the best. They've been reintegrating to, to training this week, all of them. Um, they are in different phases, but, um, but some of them will be in the squad tomorrow. Uh, Kieran Tini, you saw him come off the bench last week. Um, is he nearing full fitness level? Will he be able to start coming back soon? Well, he played uh, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes uh, last weekend, and he did really well. Uh, he's been out for a long time after the, the knee injury, but he looks in perfect condition now and, and ready to go. Things that happened, he felt something in training. We scanned in and the doctor came with some bad news. It's um, a muscular injury and um, hopefully he will be back soon. No, yet they need to do another test and hopefully next week we'll have more information. I think it's difficult to compare. We just play one competitive match. Um, they have some good games when I was the game against Seville. And uh, they've been together for a long time. It's a really strong squad. Um, a manager and coaching staff that they've been doing a fantastic job. As we all know, huge experience in the league. And it's always really difficult against them. Thank you. Michael games, uh, three o'clock kickoff. It's, I think it's going to hit 34, 35 degrees, three mm. o'clock tomorrow afternoon. How much of a is the conditions and the context of the game. Uh, we have to adapt to it. Uh, we know that we're going to have the water break uh, and get the players in the best possible condition uh, to adapt to it. And, um, and that's it, play the game that we want to play. Would you, you, don't, you wouldn't change the approach to a game because of, because of that? We can. We have to obviously adapt and, and players would have to um, be ready mentally as well to, to play in those conditions because it's not something that we do Normally we have the five shops as well, which is very, very helpful. So it's a combination of facts. Yeah, how important is that going to be, do you think, the, the five shops? I think it will be really important. I think it's, it's really helpful. I think it gives the, the squad, uh, players individually, many more chances and hope to participate in football matches. And I think now it's educating players as well that uh, not playing 90 minutes is not an issue, especially when you have so many games in the season. Uh, documentary update last night clearly showed how concerned you were about the culture of the club this time, around this time a year ago. Are you now content with, with the culture of the club? Has it changed that bit more? I am really happy with uh, where we are and the people we have at the club, the profession we have at the club and, um, and what we are building. So I could not be happier with that. Any regrets at all about the moment and the handling of the stripping of Aubameyang? Listen, it's a long time since that happened. I cannot go back every time there is uh, another series. Uh, I have made my comments on that. I was really clear and honest with my opinion. And uh, what has been done is always been done to defend our club and put the club in the best possible position and being always as clear, as honest and as consistent as we can. It was referred to in the episode last night, which I'm to see the dossier, the file that you kept about this misdemeanors of his timekeeping. I refer to it jokingly at the start there, but have you had any requests from Chelsea to have a look at that file? <laughs> Oba is an exceptional player. He did so much for us. Um, he was our captain and I think we have to be grateful, very grateful as well for what he did for this club. So if he does come back to the Premier League, he comes back to the Emirates, you feel he'll get a I hope he does because I think he deserves that. Uh, there are moments in life, there are moments in your career and uh, and sometimes the trajectories or, or the objective of each individual is different to the clubs and, and you have to respect that. I won't ask you numerous questions about potential incoming to read about. We've done good business with 
business so far this week. Then, but in terms of outgoings, you mentioned there that you had Mari leave as well this week. Any more going out before the window closes? Well, we have Bernd as well. We had Lucas Torreira, you know, so there were a few. Obviously, we had Flo Malagan uh, going on loan as well. We had moved the squad a lot. Um, and we are still willing to finalize the squad the way we want. Uh, we can add in something uh, great, but as well, there are a few players as well that, um, that we have to find uh, the right game time for them because at the moment, I think it's going to be difficult. Kieran Turley, the city is not one that you. No, and I, you know that I'm not going to be commenting on, on individual cases. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. George? Mikhail, well, I just wonder if you had to change anything this week in terms of because it's been so hot with the heat wave about training or have you just carried on as normal? But in this country, we never get it right. When it's rainy and cloudy, it's always raining and cloudy. When it's hot, it's too hot. So we have to say, listen, 23 degrees, a little bit of shadows and a nice breeze, and then we are all happy. So. We just trained. We have to adapt to the conditions. We knew that on Saturday is going to be boiling hot, and, and we have to train that conditions to get uh, up to speed. You mentioned the, the culture of the club um, and how happy you are with it now. How different was it to when you took over, and, and why was it so different? Why was it so low, possibly? It, one of, it was the club's main objective at the beginning to try to completely change that and, and create, install, and um, and make people that are participating in daily basis with the club proud, happy and accountable for their jobs. And I think we have that and I think you can see that level of uh, commitment and passion transmitted to our supporters and that's why at the moment there is such a unity at the club. Is every player buying into that culture that they know the non-negotiables and when you sign new players do you explain mm. the non-negotiables to them and what they need to do to be at Arsenal? It's the first thing that we talked about is what we're going to expect from them, what they're going to expect from the club, um, uh, what our values are, how we like to be behave and perceived, and, and that we're here to have enjoyment. It's our passion, it's what we love doing, and in order to do that we have to get on well. Uh, it's a lot of people, clubs are bigger and bigger every day, and, and you have to have, first of all, those, that respect in order to have enjoyment together. Um, a lot of Arsenal fans are enjoying your team talks in the Amazon documentary. Mm -hmm. I just wondered who was the sort of biggest influence on you as your team talks with when you was playing or who you picked some of that stuff up from along the way? I think those moments are very personal and, and very and happen really in the moment. Uh, how you are feeling, how you sense the atmosphere around the dressing room, what the players need in the moment, what the occasion is, and, and it has to come out from yourself naturally. Obviously, you have always people that inspire you in your life, uh, that have educated you, and, um, and that helps. Last one for me, nice easy one. Uh, 30 year anniversary of the Premier League on Monday. Mm -hmm. I just wondered your favorite Premier League memory. <laughs> That's a big question. I, uh, I think as a club, that invincible season was something that um, has been right in the history of this country and this league, and uh, and it will stay there forever. And hopefully, nobody except of us, maybe one day we can touch it. What? I'll go. Uh, William Sleeper, obviously, you praised him, and he was right. Praised, praised his performance at Palace, but when you got. I think he has his feet on the ground. I think that's not going to be an issue. Obviously, we have talked about um, the expectation that he already created before joining the club uh, when he was on loan. They were, he's very aware of everything that was happening around him. And uh, we have tried to manage that internally in a really quiet way. And I think it's better to stay like this for him. Because he's 21 years of age and, and he's played one Premier League match. A lot's been made about the culture, which is we talked about then. Do you think the other players in the dressing room will also help make sure that he, just, he, he, does, he doesn't get carried away, basically? Yeah, but the players really like him because he's come like a really determined and focused and humble boy that, uh, that wants to really take this club forward. Um, he's so willing to be. Uh, talk through anything that you want to talk about it, coached. Um, and his aim is to get better and get the team better, and, and that's it. And just another one, it's Emil's fit now. Huh? He, he only started one of the last five Premier League games at the end of last season. What does he have to do to, to get the, that, play, that regular pace back in the team? 
He needs to stay fit. He needs to stay fit, train well, and uh, perform at the level that um, he is able to perform. Because when when he does that, it's really difficult not to pick him up. James, just picking up on what Mark was asking there about Saliba, I think one thing that the pundits mentioned a lot was the the confidence, the composure that that he showed on the pitch. When he came back from Marseille, did you get any sense that, that he changed in that regard and developed? When we got him back in preseason, yeah, yeah, the first impression was really positive. It's just his, uh, as you said, his body language, um, his presence, and uh, the confidence that he was acting with. He was, um, he was very mature. And I believe his agent came to call me over the summer with talks. Two years left on his contract. He must be one you're keen to tie down quite soon. We will address all these issues like we always do. That's why uh, the board and Edu will be preparing all the scenarios that uh, we can possibly face, and uh, we want players to be happy here and feel valued. Uh, but we just started this season. Well, Michael, I think uh, across the pitch, you have quite a few areas where you have a slightly different profile player for the same position, so like Tierney and Zinchenko. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, as a manager, how useful is that for you to have? It gives us different threats and uh, and creates different problems as well for the opponents because doing the same thing with very different qualities um, creates different scenarios, different problems to the opposition, and as well it gives us a, a big flexibility as well with with the same players to play in different ways. And um, in in the documentary, I noticed before the Norwich game last year, you said. Just give them a little bit less instructions. Is that something you think you've started to do a bit less in terms of just trying to control everything and maybe giving them a bit more free free reign? That's the idea and and the dream that um, that they can decide by themselves, that they can make decisions by themselves, and those decisions are right in execution, in timing, and uh, and in purpose, and uh, and that's the direction that obviously we want to take. I think that's something that the player is going to tell us. Uh, we will try him. Uh, we already are trying him in training different positions, but he's played off the left, off the right. He's played as a false nine, attacking midfielder. So it's good. And he doesn't want to be locked in in one position as well because he's so used to it. Uh, and that's a really positive thing for us. You said it might take him a little bit of time to adapt to the Premier League because of the physicality and stuff. How long do you reckon it will be before we see the very best? I don't know. That's a. Um, a question mark that it's very difficult to to be respond uh, right now, but uh, it might take him no time, and he starts to get there depending who he's playing with, how the game goes, uh, how quickly he's going to adapt. What I can tell you that he's doing everything he can to to that process, make it really really short.